Well, in this video, we are going to look at uh, what quadratic equations are and how to solve them. Uh, and we'll look at a number of different ways of solving uh, quadratic equations. So quadratic functions um, are ones that are written in this form here. Uh, and the main thing is that the highest power of x is a 2. So it's a quadratic uh, function. Uh, this one here, uh, and I'll talk about it on another slide, I would call a quadratic relation. But we'll talk about definitions, specific ones later. So if this is what the quadratic uh, e relation looks like, uh, here's what the function looks like. Notice the different letters in front there. Uh, if you were to graph it, a quadratic function or a quadratic relation has that typical parabola uh, kind of shape. And the, prob the shape can be like this, or it can also be upside, upside down. Um, while you're going through this section, and lots of the sections in Math 95, it's a useful idea or useful tool to get some kind of graphing calculator or some kind of uh, app on your phone where you can graph functions. And that can help you determine some, what some of the um, characteristics of the functions are. And so using a TI or whatever kind of graphing calculator you have, Desmos is a, a real nice app that you can get on your phone. Another nice one is Wolfram. If you have a computer using a program like Grapher, I think that's that one. Or on a, a Windows computer, there's an old one. And I forget the name of it. Anyway, there's other tools on your Windows computer where you can uh, graph things. So being able to graph something is useful uh, specifically looking for characteristics. We want to determine the characteristics mathematically, but often graphically that uh, can help us. Okay, so here's where I was going to talk about what those definitions are. When you look at a quadratic equation, it's one where the highest power is a 2, uh, but what you have is you, you um, have the quadratic part equal to a 0. Okay, and these are things that we're going to solve. Uh, a quadratic relation, you write it, and instead of having a zero there, you put in a y. And so this would be, uh, I would term it a quadratic relation. If you replace the y with an f of x, then I specifically call that a function. That's getting a little picky because typically if I see something like this, uh, x squared plus 5x plus 6 e equals zero, uh, I often say, well, that's a quadratic function. Really, this is written as a quadratic equation. If I replace a 0 with an f of x, then I call that uh, a function. With each of these, though, you do different things. Like this one here, you could say uh, solve that. For this quadratic relation, you could actually say, well, what are some points, like x and y points, of that particular uh, relationship? Uh, for a function, you can, again, do the same kind of thing. What are some x and y uh, points for it? But then you could also start talking graphically. I guess you can do that with relations, too. Graphically, what does that function look like? Uh, like, where was it across the x-axis? Where does it cross the y-axis? What's the bottom point? In this section here in 3.2, we're basically going for where does it cross the x-axis. And to do that, to where it crosses the x-axis, that point there is where y or f of x, either of those, is equal to 0. And so what we're going to be doing is when we solve a quadratic equation, like this one here, when we solve that, we'll come up for, with values that, that satisfy that equation. But if it had been written as a function, those exact solutions for a quadratic equation are um, the x-intercepts for the quadratic function. I might be belaboring that point a little bit much. Okay, um, so functional notation, uh, <clears throat> like I was saying earlier, you could have the f of x like that, or you could call it a y. But what this allows us to do is do something like um, this question right here asks. When I say f of 2 or f bracket 2, what that means is what is the value of this function up here called f when you plug a 2 in for x? And notice that was like a long sentence. So rather than writing that out, I can just write f of, say, minus 4. And this would say, what is the value of the function 
named f when you plug a negative 4 in for x. Okay, um, And so to solve that, you just pl plug a 2 in everywhere you see an x, and then figure out what that comes out to uh, in the end. That's different than saying uh, um, uh, f of x is equal to 0. Uh, in this one here, it's saying what values of x make y equal to 0. And this is what we're doing in this section in 3.2, is we're setting the function equal to 0 and then solving. It's a bunch of different ways that you can uh, solve these quadratic equations. The first tool we're going to use is something called z a zero property. And a zero property basically says if I've got two things multiplied together to give me zero, then either a is zero or b is zero. And we use that if we have a function like this. Well, maybe I'll have this one factored out already. So if I have x minus 2 times x plus 5 is equal to 0, uh, this, if you were to FOIL that out, it would be an x squared plus something. Anyway, this is in factor form, but it's something times something equals 0. So the 0 property or 0 principle says, well, if, that, if this times this equals 0, then either x minus 2 is a 0 or x plus 5 is 0. And then to solve that, uh, each one of these, I'd add 2 on this side. So I get x is equal to 2. And then on this one, I'd subtract 5 on each side. So I'd get x equals minus 5. So the solutions to this equation here are x is 2 and x is negative 5. That's a zero property. And that's why we learned to factor. So if I have a quadratic like this, uh, one of the tools I can use is factor it. Uh, make it equal to 0, and if I have two things multiplied together to give 0, I can use this 0 property to solve. Okay, so here's here's an example of one. So 2x squared plus 7x minus 15, and I want to solve that equation. If you're thinking about a function, so if this is the function there, notice it's the same thing. Uh, what I'd be asking here is, what are the x-intercepts of that function? And to do that, I replace f of x with a 0 and then solve. And to solve this, I use the 0 property. So I'm going to want to multiply or figure out uh, how to factor that particular uh, function or that equation. OK, I'm just going to do guess and check. So 2x and an x. And why don't I try a 5 here and a 3 there, maybe? And why don't I make this plus and this a minus? I'm thinking. So let's check. So it'll be 2x squared plus 10x minus 3x. It'd be a 7x. Yes. Minus 3 times 5 minus 15. So that is the correct factorization of that function above. So now I have that equal to 0. Therefore, I can say, well, either 2x minus 3 is 0 or x plus 5 is 0. In this case here, I'll add 3 to both sides. So I'll get 2x is equal to 3. And then I'll divide both sides by 2. So x equals 3 halves. On the one on the right here, I'll subtract 5 on both sides. So I get x is equal to minus 5. So these are my two solutions to that equation. If it had been a function like this at the start, then these two numbers would have been the x-intercepts. And if you take a look over here, I've, I've uh, graphed this. And there's one of the x-intercepts at a minus 5. And then this one over here has got to be at 3 halves. That'd be about 1.5. There it is right there. That's um, So when I solve that quadratic equation, these are solutions to the equation. And if it's written as a function, those are the x-intercepts of the function. OK, here's some. Maybe you can uh, try those on your own and uh, see what you come up with. And then um, so press pause, then press play later. OK. Hope you press play. So this first one, I'd say x minus 3 is 0, or x plus 5 is 0. So x is 3, or x equals minus 5. And if you take a look, uh, th minus 5 and plus 3, that, that's where it crosses the x-axis. This next one isn't written right, right? I have to bring that 5 over to the other side. So 6x squared plus 13x minus 5 equals 0. And then let's factor that. Um, OK, so 6x squared, I might just change that to 3x and 2x. 
And then maybe I'll put a 5 here and a 1 there. Because I have to get things that multiply to 5. Maybe I'll make this one positive, this one negative. Is that right? Through 6x squared plus 15 minus 2. Yeah, that's right. Good. So that is the factorization. Therefore, to solve the equation, I'd say 3x minus 1 is 0. Add 1 to both sides. Divide by 3. So x is equal to 1 third. That looks to be that point right there. And then on this side, 2x plus 5 is 0. Subtract 5 on both sides. Divide by 2. And so negative 2 and a half looks like that's that point right there. So that's how you can solve a quadratic equation by factoring and using the 0. Another way you can solve some uh, um, quadratic equations is by using a square root principle. Notice in this equation here, typically I have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Uh, in this case, I have an x squared term, and I have a constant term, but I don't have one of those. If I don't have that middle term, then it's fairly easy in this one just to do uh, the square root principle. So for this one here, I would say uh, I want to get that x squared by itself, so I'll divide both sides by 4. So I get x squared is equal to 5. And then when I use a square root principle, if I square root this side, the square and the square root cancel. But if I square root this side, I also have to square root this side. Now, one thing I know about quadratic equations is that there's always two answers. So here, this is only showing me one. But when you use a square root principle on this one on the right side, you have to add a positive or a negative. So your answer here will be x is equal to a positive root 5 or a negative root 5. And root 5 is like 2 point something or other. So on your graph, you can look and 2 point something or other positive is where it crosses the x-axis. And negative 2 point something or other uh, is the other um, x-intercept. Okay, so that's a square root principle. Now, you can also use a square root principle uh, in the next example. Oh, here's some you can try. Sorry. In the next example, I'll show you in the next slide is, is another application of that. Press pause, try these ones, then press play to see how you do. So this would be, I'd add 15 to both sides to get that x squared by itself. Then I'd use the square root principle. So I get a plus or minus root 15. On this one, I'd divide both sides by 3. And then I would square root both sides. Oh, this one comes out even. So it would be plus or minus 4. Okay, I didn't show that, but there's a square root there. And I have to remember plus or minus there. Okay, so here's an example of where you could use that square root principle in combination with completing the square. Completing the square is a tool that you can use. Um, and myself, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't uh, use it. I would try using, fa using factoring before or another tool. But it is, it is handy to know how to use uh, completing the square. We do use it on occasion. So if you're solving an equation using completing the square, and there's different times when, when you would use it, but if you're solving an equation with completing the square, you want to get the x squared and the x term on a side by itself like these are here, and take the, the other number to the other side. Then you're going to take the uh, 10, and I'm just going to put it over on the side here, take 10, divide it by 2, and square it. And this, this divide by 2 and square is something you do with every one of the complete the squares. So 10 by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. And so then on this, uh, let me just write this out. Then on this side, I'm going to write a plus 25. And what that makes here is a perfect square. And I'll show you in a second how that is. If I add 25 to the left side, I also have to add 25 to the right side. So now this, if you were to try and factor it, two numbers that multiply to 25 and add to 10 are 5, right? So this would be x and an x, a 5 and a 5. Since this sign is minus, both of these would be, since this one's minus and this one's plus, they'll both be minus. So I have a perfect square, or this, I, another way I could write that is x minus 5 all squared is equal to whatever negative 9 plus uh, 25 is. I think it's 16. Okay, now I'm ready to use the, the uh, square root principle. 
because I have a square here. So I'll square root this side, and that'll cancel the square out, leaving me with just x minus 5. If I square root this side, I also have to square root this side. And remember the plus or minus there. Okay, is equal to, oh, square root of 16 is 4. So this will be plus or minus 4. So again, now this is two questions, or I'll, I'll get two answers from this. So I have x minus 5 is equal to a positive 4, or x minus 5 is equal to a negative 4. And then solve each of those equations. So if I add 5 to both sides on this one, I'll get x is equal to 9. If I add 5 on this one, negative 4 plus 5, I think comes out to a positive 1. So those would be my solutions for this question. And to do that, I used completing the square. Um, completing the square with a number that's, uh, when, when you have a number out front, uh, that one becomes a little bit more um, uh, more difficult. And you, you, um, you can maybe take a look at, at how they do that in the textbook. Take a look at it, and if you have troubles, uh, give me a holler, and I can make another video on that. Okay, um, here's one you can practice. Go ahead and try that. Press pause, uh, and then press play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to take the 7 and move it to the other side. Then I'll take the 4, the four and divide it by 2 and square it. Okay. So when I do that, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So I add 4 on that side. If I do it on the left side, I also have to do it on the right side. So then this becomes x plus 2 all squared is equal to 11. Now I'll use a square root principle. So I'll square root this, square root that with a plus or minus. So I have x plus 2 is equal to the positive or negative square root of 11. Again, I have two answers, so I'll have x plus 2 is equal to a positive root 11, or x plus 2 is equal to a negative root 11. Moving a 2 to the other side, I'll get negative 2 plus root 11, or negative 2 minus root 11. And those are my, be my two answers for that question. Okay, um, another way we can solve quadratic equations is using a formula. And this is probably lots of students' favorite one. It, the, the formula looks complicated, but it's just a matter of plugging numbers in. Um, oh, there's something missing on the formula. Interesting. b squared minus 4ac. There should be a c there underneath the square root sign. OK, so if I wanted to uh, solve this equation, I could solve it. And I already have solved that one on an earlier slide. so. We'll see if we can remember what the numbers were. I think we solved that one. Um, uh, anyway, so I could solve it by factoring. I could do completing the square. I could graph it and take a look. But sometimes when you graph it, it doesn't come out bang on. Uh, but I can use the quadratic formula to solve that. Uh, this follows the format ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is a 2, uh, b is a 5, and c is a negative 7. And so all I have to do is plug those numbers into this equation. So the solutions to the equation, so the values of x that make this statement true are, so a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Notice I just put brackets where the variables are. I do that just so I don't mess up on negative signs. Okay, b is a 5, uh, b is another 5, a is a 2, uh, c is a negative 7, and a uh, is a 2. Okay, so if I plug, if I uh, simplify this, this will be minus 5 plus or minus the square root of, this will be 25. Okay, 4 times 2 is 8, times 7 is 56. Negative times negative would be a positive 56 all over 2 times 2, or 4. So simplifying again, minus 5, plus or minus. If I add those two together, that's uh, is that 81. 70, yeah, 81. Oh, that's a nice number, over 4. OK, I'm just going to continue over on this side. 
So x is equal to minus 5, plus or minus. This doesn't often happen, but sometimes it does to get a perfect square root. Square root of 81 is 9 all over 4. So again, I have two answers. I have minus 5 plus 9 over 4, and I have minus 5 minus 9 all over 4. So minus 5 plus 9, that's 4. 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. And then on this one, uh, minus 5 minus 9 is a minus 14 over 4. That's the same thing as minus 7 over 2. Or I think on one of the graphs we had, it was minus 3 and a half, I think. Okay, so uh, I typically like to leave it as fractions. So, so minus 7 over 2 and 1, those would be the solutions to this equation here. If you were graphing it at 1 and minus 3 and a half over here somewhere, that's where that graph would cross the x-axis. Okay, here's one you can try. Do the pause play thing and see if you how you do. Uh, again, I forgot the C right there. That's a C. Okay, uh, hopefully you're back. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus a square to b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So uh, well, let's see, b is a 4, b is a 4, a is a 1, and c is a negative 7, and a is a 1. So this would be minus 4 plus or minus a square root of 16, uh, minus 4 times that would be 28. So plus 28 all over 2. Or minus 4 plus or minus the square root of, if I add that, I think that's 44. Yeah, all over 2. Again, carrying on over here on the right, um, 44, I could rewrite as the square root of 4 times the square root of 11 all over 2. And I do that to simplify because then the square root of 4 is 2. So I have minus 4 plus or minus 2 root 11 all over 2. Feeling pretty, pretty good at this point, but this 2 will divide, this 2 here will divide into both terms on the top. So I could rewrite that as negative 4 over 2 plus or minus 2 root 11 over 2. And then I can simplify each of those. Negative 4 divided by 2 is 2, negative 2 plus or minus, these twos would cancel, so it'd be root 11. So my two answers are minus 2 plus root 11 and minus 2 minus root 11. Okay, so that's some good practice with the quadratic formula. Um, so the last uh, slide here, uh, I think this last slide, uh, is taking a look at a, uh, um, just a different term for what we've been doing, and it's zeros. So uh, all the things that we've been doing, we've been solving an equation and finding solutions. All of those things, when you look at it in terms of a function, is what you're doing is you're trying to find uh, the zeros of that function. So if I wanted to find the zeros of this function, I'd put a zero there. So I'm looking for the values of x that make where the equation crosses the x-axis. Uh, in other words, where the y value is equal to zero. Okay, so to find the zeros, I plug a zero in for f of x, and then I solve that equation. And this you could solve any way you wanted to. You could try graphing it and see where it crosses there. And sometimes it would cross at exact numbers, so that would be fairly accurate. Uh, I could factor this. Maybe let me try factoring. Um, I'm thinking... Uh, um, that might not work. Why don't we do 4x? And let's do a 3 and a 3. I think they'll all be plus. So 4x squared plus 12 plus 3, that's 15 plus 3 is 9. Yeah, that's correct for factoring. And then 4x plus 3 is 0, or x plus 3 is 0. You sub subtract 3 on both sides, and then divide by 4. So you get negative 3 quarters is one answer. And your other answer is negative three, and I could have I could have done that with factoring. I could have completed the square to do that, uh, um, or I could have used the quadratic formula for it. Typically, what um, the um, 
order that I try things in is I first try and factor one. If they don't say solve this by doing a certain way, typically I try and factor. If I if the factoring doesn't work, then I'll go to the quadratic formula, um, and typically that one's going to work. If they tell me that I have to use to complete the square, uh, then I guess I use to complete the square. But if they don't tell me I have to use this, then typically I'm using one of those tools. Okay, um, the last question, just to show you an example problem uh, that might involve a quadratic function is, is this one here. They talk about the dimensions of Persian rug whose perimeter is 28 and whose area is 48. So I need to use that information to come up with a quadratic equation and then solve it. So if they say the perimeter is 28, I know the perimeter formula is 2L plus 2W. But if they tell me it's 28, then I can put a 28 here, 2L plus 2W. And then just to simplify this equation, I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I'll divide this by 2, this by 2, this by 2. So I'll get 14 is equal to L plus W. And what I'm looking for is a relationship between L and W. So the sum of L and W is 14. If I wanted to say just know what W is, I could subtract L on both sides, and I'd come up with 14 minus L. So um, the width is the total 14 minus whatever the length is. Okay, so there's a relationship between width and length. Then they also say the area is 48. Area, I know of a, a, re a rectangle, is length times width. They tell me the area is 48. And then um, uh, I can start using this information here. They say the W, and here's a W here, is 14 minus L. So I'm going to put that in for W. And then L, I'll just use L. And notice what I'm really going for here is an equation where I only have one variable. So I'm wanting to get rid of the W. Okay, now it doesn't look too quadratic-ish quadratic yet, but it will. Uh, so now I can multiply this through. So I'd get uh, uh, 14L, oops, 14L minus L squared is equal to 48. And then if I bring everything over to the left side, I'll come up with L, positive L squared minus 14L plus 48 is equal to 0. There now I've got an equation, a quadratic equation, which I could factor, quadratic formula, um, solve by completing the square, all that stuff. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, you can maybe pause and try it with whatever tool you want and then see what you come up with. And then press play and, and uh, I'll show you what I did. So what I'm going to try with this one is completing the square, just to give you another example of that. So I'll give you L squared minus 14L, and I'm going to push the 48 to the other side. So it'll become a negative 48. And then uh, 14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 squared is 49. So I'll add 49 on this side. If I do it there, I have to add 49 on that side. So this one works out to a perfect square. It'll be L minus 7 squared is equal to uh, negative 48 plus, well, that's just 1. Cool. Now I'll use the square root principle. So I'll square root this side, square root this side with a plus or minus on it. So I have L minus 7 is equal to a positive or a negative 1, because the square root of 1 is just 1. Two equations again, L minus 7 equals 1 or L minus 7 equals a negative 1. Uh, I'll add 7 to both sides. So I'll get L is equal to 8. And on this side, if I add 7 to both sides, I'll get L is equal to 6. So if they're asking me for the dimensions of the rug, I would say that the length is either 8 or 6. So I could put an 8 here. I could put an 8 there, and then uh, I could plug that 8 back in right here to figure out what the width would be. 14 minus 8 would be 6, so the width would be a 6. Now, if you take a look at it, 8 times 6 is 48. That's what the area was. And if you add all these distances up, 8 and 8 is 16, 
6 and 6 is 12. If you add those 12 and 16, that gives you the 28 that they had said that the perimeter was. So I know it's correct. I guess I could also say, well, the, the length might be 6, and that would make it width 8. But typically, that doesn't make sense. Usually, the length is along the side, and the width is the shorter side. But anyway, I've got the dimensions for that. All right. Um, hopefully, that has helped you solve some quadratic equations. Now go and practice uh, using those strategies on lots of questions.